Should we unwrap it and see what's inside? Yes, we okay, should unwrap it. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I don't get to unwrap pool very often. It's very satisfying, too, to just sort of unwrap some plastic and have a finished pool, basically. Instant pool, right? What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a big deal. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Narragansett, Rhode Island where we have got a ton going on today. You can see that the garage doors are being installed and now this garage, well it was an addition to the original 1880s house as was this space right here. Hey Mike, okay. this is sort of the new mud room, we got a half bath and you can see we have been insulated, that is three inches of closed cell foam all throughout these walls and while that was going in, Everybody had to clear out while it was setting up, but now we are back. Aaron, how are you? And back to be putting up the, uh, we've got the blue board ready for plaster going up on the walls as well as the ceiling. And here in the front living room, there's going to be a coffered ceiling effect, which you can see around the perimeter right here. There are some holes, I presume, Tommy, for recessed lights, but we've also got some AV equipment going in today. Yeah, we got a lot of recessed lights in the ceiling, so a lot of holes. But the other thing is we're putting some AV equipment recessing the speakers behind the veneer plaster. Behind the plaster? Behind the plaster. And Eric will explain exactly how this all works. Eric, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That's our speaker right there? This is our speaker right here. All right. So most of it I sort of recognize, right? We've got the business end behind here. We've got the wiring. And then we've got the front, sort of a softer material that's going to resonate the sound. Absolutely. That's a woven fiberglass. And the trick to this is that behind here you see the magnet much, much bigger than a traditional magnet on a traditional speaker. So that big round disc right there, that's the magnet. And Absolutely. bigger, why? What does bigger do for us? Um, bigger is going to get us through the plaster. So what, through the plaster. Through the plaster. So what we want to do is we want to put that up and get that through the plaster. We're going to use more power, about three times as much power, and a much bigger magnet. So how is it that it doesn't sound like garbage when it is behind the plaster? Sure, so great question. Now those two things combined allow this speaker and that plaster to become one unit. And what this speaker actually does is it, it's not much of a speaker without all of this. Once it has the plaster and it's joined to the ceiling, it turns the ceiling into a speaker. Wow, that Pretty is cool. very cool. I've never seen that before. Okay, so I see one of you guys are getting ready to work. Where did you guys start? Yeah, you started right there. He's putting these blocks in here, and this is to screw the speakers to. These large holes are for springs. The springs allow them to adjust the speaker itself oh, cool. to be flush with the blue board so they can veneer plaster will touch the speaker. We want to make sure we really tighten this up. Uh, you don't want these wire nuts coming off. You're not going to get a second chance with that speaker. You see that little micro adjustment going on right now. Spring's pushing down while the screws are trying to pull it up. Could I retrofit this speaker system into an existing living room ceiling? Yeah, you absolutely could. Uh, you'd have to cut a hole in and put the speaker in and do some plastering and painting afterwards, but maybe if you were renovating a room, it'd be a really great idea. Nice. Yeah, you got to run the wire from point A to point B too, so. Right. And then with that finish coat on, those speakers are gone. We'll never see them again. Right. He's going to start with a veneer, veneer coat over the entire ceiling, and you won't even see any of this. Won't see him, but we'll hear him. And that's the point of it. Well, the plaster and paint is on the horizon, so the HVAC contractor becomes the most popular guy on campus. They'll need heat inside the building. Mike Gamash and his gang have uh, done a great job getting us to this point. Yes, we have. Look at these two beauties here. What is this? What's going on? What do you got? We got two uh, condensing units. These are 24 SEER, and our SEER is our Season Energy Efficiency Ratio. All right. Now, that's an important number. That takes the amount of cooling power that you get out of a unit, and you divide it by the electricity that you need to, you need to do it, right? So Correct. this thing is what, 24? This is 24 SEER. So, I mean, the basic minimum sear in America is now, what, 13 or something? 13. So this is double that. Correct. Okay, so I Correct. see you brought an old one here. Yes, we have a two-ton, 
24,000 BTUs and a 24,000 BTU. So these are yeah. exactly the same cooling power. Correct. But they're, look at the size difference. There's an important reason why the size is different. Inside of a conventional condenser, you got your compressor, you got your fan blowing air, and it has a heat exchanger right here filled with refrigerant. And that sear is that whole ratio between how much electricity for the compressor and fan versus how much cooling power. Correct. So if it's a c cooling condenser, it's going to dump heat to outside. If it's a heat pump, it's going to pull it in this way. On this 13 say, look at the size of it compared to this. The way they get that efficiency is to almost double the heat exchanger surface right here. So now when that fan comes on, blows air into it, it uses X amount of electricity, but almost 2X in terms of its cooling efficiency. So what about the smarts of this thing too? The smarts of this thing. Well, years ago, normally with something on this, we would have to do our calculations as far as hooking our gauges up, weighing the charge in, in order to get the unit to cool or heat efficiently. To get the right amount of refrigerant into the system initially. Correct. Yeah. Today, that's changed with technology. So today, when we start the system up, the control will actually tell us what we need to put in for refrigerant, yeah. and the app will actually tell us what is going on here. All right, so, so as you say, with this one, we would have looked at these gauges and then weighed the charge and then added some more and guessed at it and add some more and do that. Correct. And now you're not going to use these gauges at all? Nope, we okay. don't use those gauges at all. We okay. use an iPad today. That's great. This is the best way that we charge our system so that we're accurate with our charge. Right, and it communicates wirelessly. It communicates through Bluetooth. You're making it easy. And making it easy. Now, what about noise? Everybody wants to worry that it's too noisy. No, actually, this system is one of the quietest out there. It's about 55 decibels running at about 80% to 100%. So listen to that. No more than a refrigerator running in your home. You know, I've been doing this show for 40 years or so. I don't think we've ever been able to do a scene next to a condenser and talk about it. Absolutely. That's it's great. usually loud. That's right. So I'll tell you what, Rich, let me button this up. You can head inside. We got some more technology in with the controller. Awesome. Great, brother. With our Generation Next initiative, we've been talking about getting young people into the trade. But in this case, there's one that's already in the industry. Rachel, you're been working with your dad for a little while? Yes. Hi, Rich. I love seeing people, particularly women, in the HVAC industry. So that's great. Thank you. But he says you got some technology to share with us? Yeah. So here the system actually communicates with a portal and it generates an email right back to me in the office to where I can actually log in and see if the system is having any complications. It tells you before it even tells the homeowner? It does. That's even does. better. Very smart. Also good for having the techs know what's going on too? Correct. So we can log in, see the fault code, and possibly it could be a motor or maybe, you know, a capacitor and we can prepare the technician better for a service. And time is money. Absolutely. Well, I love and you're and you're really good at all that stuff? Oh, I try. <laughs> That's right. I love this thermostat here. Now it's got the regular stuff you'd expect, you know, scheduling like calendar and setting time of day and temperatures and everything else. But I love this one right here where it's got this energy monitoring where you can actually view energy usage. You enter in what your fuel is, it'll tell you actually what you've used per day in electricity or gas and it'll graph it so that can actually change behaviors pretty cool so i think it's time to fire this baby up don't you i do here we go stand back all right <laughs> oh, now you can see that variable speed blower come in nice and gentle nice and quiet you'll be very popular they really want to get this place finished up and I love what you guys did to protect the equipment on the return air side. You put in heavy duty disposable filters to make sure that all the sheetrock dust doesn't wreck this beautiful stuff. Correct. Thanks for a great job. Thanks, Rich. Our homeowners have got big plans for their new two car garage. There's a little room out back. It's a cabana that services the backyard and it's two bays. He hopes to get two cars in here and maybe one more. He's a car enthusiast and hopefully he's going to put a lift right here so you could stack one car on top of the other. Now when it comes to getting the necessary headroom for that, well a traditional garage door opener you'd see the motor mounted traditionally right here in the center dropping down off of the ceiling and that causes problems when we need the headroom. So Scott you're going to help us put in something different 
something that uh, has been around for a while, I guess, in the commercial space, but it's relatively yes. new in the residential space. Yes, and for this particular application, we had spoken with the homeowner that, to your point, has a lift and needed to maximize the amount of space. Yep. So with the side mount opener that we are putting in for this particular application, uh, it's going to enable us to achieve more clearance for his lift. I'm looking at the side mount right here, this little device, that right. is the driving motor. The way that the system works is that this is going to turn the shaft at the header, so it's going to eliminate the need for pulling on that top section. Okay. So we're going to save between 7 to 12 inches worth of space on the interior of the garage. As Seven a to 12 of inches this. that we would have taken up with the motor hanging from the ceiling? Correct. Now it's gonna help if you wanna get a lift in here, okay. Yes. All right, it looks like he's almost done wiring this thing. Okay. So now that we've set the limits, we're fully operational and good to go. All right, and so this one will be operational, that one will be operational, and our homeowner has got the clearance he needs for a lift. Absolutely. Scott, I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks to you and your guys. Yes, thank you. Our backyard has got, well, it's, it's got a lot going on. This is gonna be an outdoor kitchen in here. There's gonna be a pizza oven built onto that pad. This is all gonna be hardscaping in here. We've got the cabana window behind us. This is actually not gonna be a, hey Mike, Aaron, this is not actually gonna be our septic system. This is gonna be a pool, which is gonna be completely done by the end of the day. On the far side, we've got a putting green, a shed, we've got a generator, but this is the story for today. How are you, sir? Karen, nice to see you again. Hey, Kevin. You? Hey, nice to see you. So, pool on a truck. That's a novel idea. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. Tell <laughs> us about that because uh, you, you guys actually prefabricate these for us. We do, right. The whole idea is we can make them ahead in our warehouse in New Hampshire. We don't have to worry about the weather. Uh, we can do so many things ahead of time before it arrives to you. What is that process? Well, we have our own form and we pour, um, it's a really, it's an, certified plant so we pour our concrete at 5,000 psi there's a rebar grid inside and it's all kind of tied together with bonding wire so all the things that a normal a pool would be done on site normally by a gunite builder let's say yeah. we do ahead right. then we bring it into our warehouse and we hydro ban it we waterproof it we tile it and then when it comes to you under that shrink wrap it's done and literally it's going to be concrete with the finished tile inside it dropped into the hole ready to go almost in a day ready to go yes all right well it is a big monster right here even though it is a small pool so i'd love to see this thing come off the truck and go in our hole i'm excited he's got a nice tight hold on that with the steel cables how much weight is he lifting he's lifting twenty six thousand pounds we're right about at the capacity of of what he can lift the sweener team came in and they they dug the hole and then they laid 18 inches of crushed stone and they laser leveled it. And then they've got their spots marked where they want the center line of the pool. And we'll, we'll get that all organized once we get the pool off the truck. That's literally it, just a hole with crushed stone on the bottom and you're good to go. Yep. Very nice. So pretty close, although still sort of hovering here. Um, what's the holdup? What's the next step? Well, now we just want to get it squared up with whatever we're squaring to and get it centered so that it's, um, when he sets it down, it's where we want it. So final adjustments right here, drop it in place. What does it cost for the pool, the delivery and such? You know, all in with a pool and a heater, our cost is around 30000 And if I were to do it traditionally with an on-site process, how does it compare to that? It's right around half, half. In, in many cases, yes. Okay. Should we unwrap it and see what's inside? Yes, we okay, should unwrap let's it. let's do it. <laughs> I don't get to unwrap pools very often. <laughs> Oh wow, look at that. It's pretty, at, huh? At first I thought I was looking at more concrete, but what is that, some sort of a limestone on the most of it? It's a porcelain tile. Porcelain tile yeah. with an accent around the top. So pretty. Oh, I love the choice they made. It's very satisfying, too, to just sort of unwrap some plastic and have a finished oh. pool, basically. Uh, instant pool, right? Look at that. They'll add some rigid foam around the pool to keep the heat in in the winter. Very nice. Since most people use, the, they use their pools all winter long. Right. Then they'll backfill with crushed stone and do the finish work on the coping and patio. And then what? You guys or a plumber connects supply lines, water lines and such? Yep. Somebody local, uh, whoever is local to that job can do the PVC connections and the electrical connections. 
and they'll be sitting in a nice heated pool in a couple months in the middle of winter. Absolutely, yeah. They that sure is will. awesome. Karen, thank you so much. This <laughs> oh, is terrific. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yes, we appreciate it too. Thank you. And it's a good thing it's small because it's a small backyard, even though it's big. <laughs> Perfect. Our board and plaster will be up and finished in a day or so, and that means it's time for us to start thinking about the interior finishes, but our designer and homeowner have surely been thinking about them for a long time. Kristen, good to see you again. Hey, you too, Kevin. Cassie and A, nice to see Hi. you. how are you? So this is kitchen, dining area, right? Yes. How'd you like to give me a tour of sort of the layout? Absolutely. Where does everything go? So over here is going to be a bar area nice. with a backsplash. Okay. Um, then we're going to have my little coffee station, well, mine and Michael's coffee station, <laughs> coffee bar. This was the outhouse. Yes, I originally remember. Originally the outhouse. So now it's going to be a functioning pantry with cabinetry doors look kind of hidden. And then we'll walk into the pantry. One of my favorite conversions and save in the house yeah, is that the great. outhouse yeah. becomes pantry. <laughs> that says everything about where we've come. Oh, absolutely. And then this right here will be the sink. Nice. With cabinetry around, we're going to have the stove and then the hood on the top. Over there, this is sort of the center, your fire, counters on either side, I presume? Yep, and then the refrigerator is going to be right here. So is it going to be refrigerator, freezer next to each other or are you going to uh, separate? There. One unit, two doors. Two doors, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And then over on this wall, I can see a little gas fireplace go in. Yeah. So. And then we're going to just have a wall for pictures and family memories because there's really not many walls right. in this house. So we wanted to leave this more closed in. We have our kitchen table over here. Look out these beautiful windows. How nice is that going to be? Yeah. I mean, so look at that was, right there. Yeah. They and what that used fabulous. to look like back originally when the house was a dining room. I mean, I they were beat up, but a beautiful restoration right there. Terrific. Yep. So this will be our little nook kitchen seating area. And then in the middle, we're going to have um, a bar. I mean, a breakfast bar area. Nice. So right in the center. Can't have too many bars bar. in the kitchen, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, God. So I get the layout. Um, in terms of the finishes, the feel, the aesthetic. 1880s Victorian home near the ocean. How respectful are we being of that versus how much updating we're doing? Sure. Well, trying to stay within the integrity of the architecture here. The white oak, very classic, mm -hmm. but bringing it up to a little modern flair with the herringbone pattern that we have here. Engineered product here? It is. Gotcha. And then from the floor, where'd you go? From the floor, we went to another very neutral palette piece here, which is our cabinetry. And this is a classic shaker style door, mm -hmm. but added an OG bead. Being that it's inset, makes it look a little more custom. And white is neutral. Still very popular in kitchens, this color. I mean, we are bringing some color back, but there's still a lot of white kitchens. Uh, this is for perimeter cabinets, for all cabinets, lower, upper, islands, or what? Just the perimeter. Just the so perimeter. So we're using this color on the perimeter, and then we'll move on to the island. And the island, the bar, and the hood will play oh, yeah. that black and white, which was our color palette in here, was black and white. And then adding a very traditional gilded type of inlay. That's this right here. This is a pretty bold statement. I mean, yeah. a lot of saturation in this color right here. That's a, the gold is a pretty bold statement right there. And we have some gold fixtures that we blended in yeah. that will make it all very cohesive. So that's going to be our countertop. So this will be on the perimeter cabinets as well as the island cabinets. Correct. And, yep. and what is the material? This is Calcutta Gold. Calcutta Gold. So it, again, resembles something old and classic, which is marble. But it's a quartz, so it's a man-made product. So natural material, but man-made here. And not real marble, but they've added the color to make it look like marble right there. Exactly. Super durable. Very durable. I liked the different color island, but I wanted the countertops to all be the same. Okay. So you'll see that on the island, on the perimeter, and coming through to the bar and the pantry. And then this stone, this has got a couple of different colors in here. Where does this go? So this is going to be the backsplash right where the bar is. Uh, just up on the wall Just right up on there. the wall, yep. And then there's glass shelves above yep. it, so you're going to see that. And I can um, see the colors you picked up here. So there's a white that matches sort of this marble look here, but the gold tones from the accent on the door coming through to me right there. That's nice. And the pattern here? 
So this, you can't see the whole pattern, but it will mimic the herringbone oh, nice. floor. Okay. So nice. we have the herringbone floor, then we have a herringbone on a vertical surface versus the horizontal surface. Gotcha, all right. So all the rooms open up to each other. So our thought is to have one common color yep. that will flow throughout the house. Gotcha, you guys have got samples. Have these informed your color choices? Well, today we're gonna look at that because right. Casey had wanted to have light colors yep. and then have pops of design everywhere else, through pillows and rugs yep. and things like that. This so, is um, for a couch that will go in here. Yeah. Couch some in samples. The gotcha. Yep. So that's one of the things you got to plug up. And then there's the kitchen cabinet base, right? So this is actually the cabinetry color that is going to flank both sides of the fireplace. Oh, and here as well. So we're going to try and bring that into these colors. And the colors are going to really dictate when we put it up there, some will look more creamy, some will look more gray. So classic gray right here, almost the color of the unfinished plaster, right? That's exactly. kind of a creamy. As you go over, how would you describe this? So these two are actually going to be looked at for door colors. Door colors. So inside gotcha. the doors will not be white, and we're going to pop that color with a gray. Gotcha. And, and what's this a candidate for, for the wall color? So that's the wall color, all the lighter colors. Gotcha. So we have Balboa Mist, White Dove, Winter White, and Classic Gray. And I want to have a little bit of a contrast with this door. All right, well, let's put the door up next to some of your samples. This is next to Classic Gray. Do anything for you? I like that. You like? Uh, is this a wall color here, Winter White, Kristen? It is, Kevin. I think that that's reading a little too cool in its color tone. Okay. All right, well, how about this one over here, Balboa? I'm pushing for that just because of the name. <laughs> what do you think, Cassie? Is that doing anything for you? I don't know. Gray owl, maybe, for the doors. No pressure. It's just know. it's a 10 pound door here. Yeah, keep <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shaking. <laughs> Kristen, what do you yeah, think? What do you, you think? You, you got I the really eye? like the classic gray. You like the classic. Can we you sell have you? a warmer white in that cabinet color, and then when you put it up there, it could go more gray or it could go more taupey. Depends on what part of the house with the light that comes in. Yeah, I like it. It's a nice soft white. So you can change your mind, but you can only change it once. So why don't you pick <laughs> something that you're leaning towards, and then maybe sleep on it and look at it okay. with some samples up in other parts of the house. What do you think? I think we're gonna go with the classic gray. Classic gray it is. Yeah. For now, right? For now. For Terrific. today. Okay. And you guys will probably maybe cover more of the wall with it, Kristen? Or? We'll definitely put samples in each part of the house because the lighting will dictate yeah. different coloring during Good. different times of the day. All right. Well, decisions are what we need to keep moving forward, so thank you for those. And Kristen, thank you for the smarts helping us get through this process. And we've actually got to make some more interior design decisions upstairs and in the bathrooms. And that and a lot more is coming up next time. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor for this old house here in Narragansett, Rhode Island. Last chance for Balboa. Well, you like Balboa. I like the name. You want the Balboa. Next time on This Old House. Okay, there's a lot going on here in this yard, and especially the plantings just had a delivery of about 200 plants. Yeah, this is a brick oven that we've got over top of a fireplace. Well, that's going to make a statement, isn't it? So what did you tell Christian you wanted? To be honest, a white bathroom. Clean, simple. Yeah? Yeah. It's an easy ask, for sure. And will it be all white? No.